Buzz. It's early February, the middle of winter in Alaska. You're staying busy walking the dog and shoveling snow and walking the dog and shoveling snow, but all the while you're wondering how your bees are doing. If you are a new beekeeper, you are obsessing over it. Are they going to make it through winter? Are they sick? Are they even alive? You've probably seen YouTube videos from guys in places like Brenham, Texas, where they've been doing inspections for a month or more. And you wonder, would it really hurt my colony if I took a quick peek? Well, most of you know that winter inspections are a terrible idea. Last fall, the bees completely sealed the top of the hive with propolis. Removing the inner cover now would break that seal, and the colony can't reseal it in weather this cold. If you open the hive now, cold air will leak in the rest of the winter. It's already hard enough for them to survive winter in an insulated hive. Adding air conditioning greatly reduces their chances of overwintering successfully. But that doesn't mean you should be ignoring your colony all winter. I inspect my colonies every few weeks. Here's what I look for. Look to see how many dead bees are on the snow in front of the hive. A few dozen are not a problem. In fact, that's a great sign that the colony is still alive. Hundreds of bees in a short time may be evidence of illness, but not always. In this picture, taken about a week after the last snow, the small amount of bees is a good sign. This is an interesting picture. As you can see, there are many more dead bees. What you can't quite see is that there are also yellow stains in the snow. That means this colony tried to take a cleansing flight, but it was too cold for some to return. This happens sometimes, and it's only a problem if high bee mortality events continue to happen. Looking closer though, we can see that there are excrement stains on the front of the hive. This may mean that the colony is suffering from dysentery, which would be bad. However, there is a relatively small amount of staining and only a handful of dead bees on the landing board. Sometimes, when cleansing flights occur in cold temperatures, from the mid to high 30s say, they're forced to relieve themselves very close to the entrance. In other words, the staining may be caused by them being in a big hurry instead of having dysentery. If you've ever had to use an outhouse at 20 below, you can probably relate. I'll be watching this colony closely, but I'm optimistic they'll make it through winter. Every couple of weeks, I clear dead bees and snow from the entrance. Don't try to get every dead bee out. Too much disturbance will make them break cluster and dozens or hundreds will die when they fly out to meet the threat. I clear a few inches deep on both sides of the entrance. Early February is the time to check your candy boards, but only if you use a candy board that can be viewed without breaking the propolis seal and without disturbing the colony. Most colonies will have barely touched their emergency sugar stores in early February. This is an example of a colony that, for whatever reason, has already eaten about a third of their sugar. I don't add additional sugar until they've eaten at least half. When I add sugar, I'm careful to pour around the edges so that none spills through the inner cover and onto the cluster. Finally, the best way to know how your colony is doing is to have a temperature sensor inside the hive. I use broodminder sensors. They are a bit pricey, but I think the information they give me is worth it. If your colony is healthy, they'll keep the internal temperature between 50 and 70 degrees all winter. When I see a graph like this, I know the hive is doing just fine. If you use the proper gear and the proper methods, you should expect your bees to survive winter. If you'd like to see the cheap and easy way I make my candy board insert, click on the link to candy board insert 2.0 installation.